Seahawks, Seahawks, who hosted the San Francisco 49ers on Thanksgiving. It was the final game of three on Thanksgiving, and it was not exactly the best way to end the day uh, if you're a Seahawks fan. Uh, the team struggled out the gate. The 49ers offense that we know is loaded with talent, you know, Kyle Shanahan in that offense, you know, there's a lot of talent already um, on the roster, but, you know, he can seem to do a, a lot with just about anything. And that happened in the first half. Seattle only gets three points, and those three points really only came because a D. Eskridge 66 yard kickoff return put Seattle in such great field position. Otherwise, they couldn't get much of anything going. There was concern coming into this game due to uh, a triceps injury, an arm injury that Geno Smith had suffered on his throwing hand, throwing arm, pardon me, in the loss to the Rams a week before, but this didn't really affect him. Uh, what does affect him, though, is the lack of play calling, better play calling, adjusting um, against a great front seven like the 49ers. Uh, Seattle was able to get a, their only touchdown of the game uh, defensively as Jordan Brooks recorded his first interception as first touchdown uh, on a pick six down uh, as the 49ers were pinned up against their own end zone. Uh, but otherwise, just a really embarrassing effort on national television that put Seattle in not a great place. There was a small hope that the NFC West could be in the realm of possibility if they were able to get this win with this loss, it's highly, highly unlikely. And their playoff hopes are all already uh, at this current point in time uh, at about a 35% chance to make the playoffs. So uh, offensive player of the game, it's hard to look at this because there really wasn't much going on on the offensive side of the ball for the Seahawks. Um, again, the play calling continues to struggle uh, adjusting to what defenses are throwing at it. Obviously, you know, Gino not getting much time is going to hurt him. And, you know, people who kind of use a little part of their mind are just blaming the quarterback. But you look at the scheme of things. If you're playing a front seven like the 49ers, if we're talking strictly this game. If you're playing a front seven like the 49ers, you've got to get the ball out quickly. You've got to work around that pass rush. You've got to do things to mitigate that front seven. And the pass rush, the play calling hasn't done that. Play calling hasn't done that much at all this year really uh and it doesn't help that you're without your top running back kenneth walker but zach charbonnet um in terms of the entirety of this offense had you know not not the worst game 14 carries 47 rushing yards he's a strong backup running back uh but just considering the pressure that's on him the weird lack of design rush rate that this seattle team has had you know despite wanting to run the football more talking about running the football more we're not seeing that come into fruition, uh, and I feel like it's hurting the Seahawks running game. So I uh, went with Charbonnet there. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, I darked about him already, but Jordan Brooks, 12 total tackles, seven solo tackles, one pass deflection, and one pick six. Jordan Brooks continues to play well after you know recovering from that ACL injury uh, in a contract year. It's been pretty solid to see Jordan Brooks uh, perform the way that he has before next to Bobby Wagner and take up some added responsibility uh, and to get his first interception and his first touchdown in this game it was nice to see nice not nice to see the rest of the game itself but yeah this one was a struggle um i talked about the injury things we got some pre game day injury notes but we'll look at the inactives here for this game as i mentioned ken walker still out uh excuse me linebacker frank clark was uh, inactive in this game as seattle had um practice squad quarterback brett ripian active for this game as they weren't sure how Gino was going to react with that injury. Uh, offensive tackles, McClendon Curtis and Ray Quan O'Neill were inactive. Uh, wide receiver, Derek Young, who recently actually came back uh, from injury was inactive and same with nose tackle Cameron Young. Some pre pregame injury notes, some good, some bad. Um, and I apologize. You see the busted lip. It's cold. Uh, I'm working on it. We'll deal with it. Um, November 15th, right tackle Abraham Lucas returned to practice. He had obviously missed the first eight games of the year with a knee injury, suffered against the Rams in week one, but had been on injury reserve since then. Um, day to day, he should he's working towards playing this week against the Cowboys on Thursday, but because of the odd schedule, playing on Thursday the week before, playing on Thursday this week, uh, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, on the 20th, it was announced that Ken Walker is not an injured reserve candidate, 
but his oblique strain is going to take a bit to figure out, which is a little bit odd. Um, there was maybe minor hope that he could go this week against the Cowboys, but it doesn't really sound like that's going to be something that's going to be a possibility. Um, and then on November 21st, it was announced that rookie safety Jarek Reed the second tore his ACL uh, and will be out for the season. Through week 11, he was actually third in the NFL in special teams tackles. He was a great story. He was a fun guy to look at during the draft when, when that took place. Uh, impact player, obviously, on special teams towards ACL, unfortunately, um, which ends his season. So, um, and then injuries first of the 49ers. Outside of uh, offensive tackle Jason Peters leaving the game with a shoulder stinger, uh, and he was questionable to return with that and seems to be better since then, there were no other injuries to report, which is good news. Uh, you know, you always like to get out of a game clean or, you know, relatively clean, but, and I won't spend too much time talking about it because the, that discourse has already taken place. Um, and it's pretty clear what the issues are. Um, the Seahawks aren't on the 49ers level, simply put Seattle is not there with San Francisco, despite, you know, in bringing in Leonard Williams, drafting the way that they have, you know, adding an offensive weapon draft. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Seattle's not there, and I don't necessarily think it's a talent thing. I think it's a play calling thing. Um, you know, you look at the way that that offense, that Seahawks offense, came out there, and that that lack of execution. Not only that, but the positions that they were put in, it's not going to beat that team. You know, when you're playing a good team like that, you've got to be disciplined, which Seattle is not, given how they lead the NFL in penalties. Um, and when you get those opportunities to go ahead and play well against that talented defense you have to execute on them and seattle didn't do that either so all around it was it was embarrassing to lose the way that you did at home it was embarrassing to lose that way that you did against a rival like the 49ers and it was embarrassing to do so on national television uh jaron reed and quandre Diggs talked post game about accountability yeah <clears throat> excuse me this whole team needs to be accountable that goes from the coaching staff to the players as well it's not just on the players you know, the coaching staff is there to put this team in positions to win. They have a ton of talent on this Seattle roster. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 frustrating. It's very frustrating uh, to see that. And you kind of wonder, hey, you're six and five now. You're still in a wild, a wild card spot. Um, the vision's likely out of the picture. What are you going to do? You, you're, you That was just game one of this four game stretch of San Fran, Dallas, uh, I, th I think you might have San Fran again. Uh, I got to look at it. Um, but anyway, in this four game stretch, you play San Fran, Dallas, Philly and San Fran again. Are you going to go Owen four in that stretch and, and uh, knock yourself out of the playoffs? You could, it's very well possible. So yeah, a lot of questions uh, around this team. Um, we've got some team related news here on the 20th. Uh, some positive, I guess, related news. Kobe Bryant uh, was designated to return to practice on the 20th. An offensive tackle, Jake Curran, uh, was signed to the practice squad on the 22nd. It was announced that linebacker Bobby Wagner uh, was named as the team's nominee for the fifth, fifth, ninth annual Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award, uh, which recognizes players around the league who exemplifies outstanding uh, sportsmanship on the field, which if you hear the talk about Bobby Wagner in the league, that sounds about right. Um, and then on the 26th, the team signed Kelvin Joseph, a cornerback and wide receiver, Cody White, uh, to the practice squad. Uh, as a result to those moves, offensive guard Ben Brown uh, was released and offense uh, outside linebacker Levi Bell was placed on injured reserve. So as I just mentioned, uh, Seattle 6-5. and five. They're second in the NFC West still, but they have three more games of an incredibly tough stretch to go. Uh, and the way that they, they just played uh, doesn't give you much hope for those three remaining games or making the playoffs in general. Uh, you might get Abraham Lucas back for this game. That's fine. But the play calling will be a big thing in my mind. So uh, next week, or this upcoming week, uh, November 30th at the Dallas Cowboys, Thursday night is a 5.15 p.m. kickoff. The Seahawks will be in their throwbacks 90s themed, 90s era themed jerseys. Uh, Dallas is coming off of an absolute thrashing of the Washington Commanders uh, in Dallas uh, in the second game on uh, Thursday. So it'll be very interesting to see how both of these teams, one coming off of a massive blowout victory, 
the other coming off of an embarrassing home loss, uh, how those teams will clash and how they will react to each other. So 